Welcome to USL Live and to the Season 23 Week 2 Preview Show. I'm your host, Rami Lox, and this is a show where we revisit the results from the previous week, discuss the upcoming matches, and try and predict the winners and how that will impact the rest of the season. Joining me to discuss all that and more, I'm honored to welcome into the broadcast booth my co-host for this evening. First up, I've got Jordan, a.k.a. Mecca. Bonsoir. I've got Josh, a.k.a. Yosh. Hello. And I've got Splitta, a.k.a. Gorilla. Let's go. Uh, for more information on the Unified Skirmish League, including the schedule, rosters, or how you can be a part of this league, we ask that you please visit uslzone.com. Uh, guys, let's kick it off with talking about the week one games. And uh, just uh, what I thought I'd do here is just kind of for some of these games, just kind of give you some targeted questions to answer um, because we mm-hmm. did have some one sided victories in these games. But first up is anything to win versus knock your punk ass down. A pretty decisive victory, uh, 97 to 24 for anything to win. Your MVP of the game was Venom. Um, just wondering what you guys thought about, uh, I mean, anything to win. I think we knew what kind of team was coming in here, but uh, your thoughts mainly on uh, knock your punk ass down. And, and if there's any, you know, saving grace for, we're going to talk a lot about Nexus too, but any saving grace for NYPD here? Yeah, all stars off. I think that um, tracks played better than I thought he would. I think at the end of last season, he didn't have very many good games, um, but he had a few cheeky law kills. I think he, uh, he had a performance he can build on going forward. I think he was their bright spot. Um, I think Enemy played okay as well, a.k.a. Suicidal Noob, a.k.a. Uh, Elmer Fudd. He um, he played pretty well. He was soloing a lot, which I probably wouldn't recommend for anything to win, but I think if he keeps doing it, he can keep getting better at it, and I think that's an important part to every squad is to have somebody who can hold a solo angle, so it was interesting to see him do it. Um, and then as far as anything to win goes, I don't think anything was surprised there. Um, we had a good game from Stoink, Tyson, R, everybody kind of, you know, kind of cycling people in at halftime. And they all uh, held their own and played well. So other than that, I don't think there's anything to mention about anything to win. Yeah, it was just a pretty one-sided game. The only thing is, is like it was 77 and the score still got out of hand a little bit. Um I think we need to be raising the minimum limits to at least eight. I know they showed at least nine people. So, you know, what are we doing on that type of deal? I understand you might want to keep the score low or whatever, but it still got out of, out of hand anyway. So. The truth be told, the score is kind of like, I think, what we all expected. A um, couple things, though. I do I do agree with Mecca in terms of tracks. Tracks played really well. Honestly, I didn't expect that from him. I thought he was still kind of like um, well, pretty bad in terms of like when he came back, really faded. He did a lot of practice, but then watching him SB, obviously versus the number one, he played as good as he could play. I mean, they were not in the best positions to begin with half the time. Um, but that being said, anything to win, I mean, there was they just played as expected, I would say. Um, and uh, yeah, I would agree with the MVP on that one as well. Eric, uh, not even dying the whole game kind of sums up that match as well. Uh, I would I would echo the sentiments of everybody. I did think tracks tracks played excellent. Uh, you know, uh, enemy I didn't notice as much in the game, but afterwards, clearly on the score, scoreboard, I agree. I thought Septic played fine. Um, I think that those three guys in particular were playing uh, pre- pretty solid for their team in terms of the competition. You know, ne- you're not going out to win that game. You just want to. Uh, you just want to limit the deaths if possible and, and play your best and learn a little bit. Uh, and I think the three of those guys definitely did. I'd also like to give a shout out to Yami Kanichi. I think that was the CTF that joined them right beforehand uh, on like the seventh or something. Um, I thought he played pretty well, especially since I think that's his first USL game ever. Um, I thought that was fantastic from him and, and really cool to see um, guys from other zones getting involved in the, uh, in the game for sure. Um, I would shout out Iso and Jordan on anything to win. I thought both you guys were wildly dominating the whole time. And Eric, yeah, I agree. When he was in, um, was was really good. It was uh, it it was the anything to win team you fully expected to see, and there wasn't. Um, it was it was absolutely what what the the page would say is what translated into the game. So, um, let's go ahead. Shout out to Eric, by okay. the way, getting only three hundred and seventy eight assist points. <laughs> Getting those last bullet kills. Absolutely. Ruthless. I mean, he finisher. only played he, he only played half the game too, though. So Yeah, but so did Stoink and he tripled his assist points. 
Uh, he was stealing all those stoic kills. Um, let's see here. Uh, Pay Pigs versus Nexus. Let's go ahead and talk about kind of a collaboration of Pay Pigs versus Nexus and Warhawks versus Nexus. But to talk about Pay Pigs first, it was 81 to 36. Um, Pay Pigs won this. MVP is leak for the game. I think everybody kind of predicted both of these results. Uh, Warhawks game, let me just go put that up there, was 66 to 14. Uh, MVP was Rio. Um, I'm I'm interested to hear what you guys thought about uh, if there were any inconsistencies there with with Warhawks and Pay Pigs versus what you predicted and you thought would happen. Um, but also, uh, anything to to take away for Nexus's game? Anything to um, uh, to compliment or improve on? I'll talk about the Pay Pigs and Nexus first because I think that was more. Uh, important game for you guys. I think if Fosto played from the beginning and SK played for the bit from the beginning, I think it would have been a lot closer match. I still think Pay Pigs takes it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think um, that's a question. But you could tell once Fosto got in, you guys played a lot better. Because um, it's interesting because we SP'd you guys right before the game and you guys were doing a really good job with Bowen leading of, you know, if you're not in an advantageous spot to just fall out. But then as soon as the Pay Pigs game starts, the first two battles, I think, you had Flash and some other person just way out of position. Um, and you guys fought in really poor positions. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, next thing you know, you guys are down like 14 to 1 or whatever it was. Uh, 14 to 2, maybe. I don't remember the exact number. But so it would I think it would have been interesting to see Fossil lead from the beginning um, just to kind of set you guys up in a better position because those first battles do matter. They matter for confidence. They matter for momentum. Um, you know, you can tune your play style because then they can't just sit at your base and farm your kills. You can kind of move around the map easier. So I think it would have been interesting to see. And I think SK coming in w- was good too. Um, I like Baza, but he was lagging and you could tell that, um, you know, he was kind of harpened by that. And then you have SK coming in who is a more experienced Marine. Um, so if they, if you guys had the full lineup, I think you guys would have done better and it would have been a more consistent performance. As far as the Warhawks, Glenn, I'll touch on that. I didn't really watch most of the game. Uh, I, I went to dinner, but um, from what I did see in the in the videos, um, kind of expected, especially on EC, Warhawks is just so experienced on EC. Um, I think that was kind of what was always going to happen. Um, it was interesting to see you guys kind of cycle through your lineup on um, EC as well. I know Machine got some some play time, and you got saw Baza back in, and uh, um, basically looked like you sh- you played almost everybody on your roster, which is always good to see as well. So shout out to you guys for that. Yeah. Um, so just talking about, I mean, it's a rough first week for Nexus. I mean, you play the number two and three squad, especially on EC, a map that you know everybody knows. I think that if we would have been doing like another map that's not as well known, like you know maybe KS10 or Urban Decay or Crimson Valley, something like that. These scores might have been a little bit closer. Um, one standout player that, um, at least for the Pay Pigs match, was Flash. He ended up putting up, I think, like 11 or 10 or 11 kills on that game. And he looked to be a pretty decent killer. Maybe if he was out of position just a little bit. Um, but, you know, that's that's something that could be fixed here or there. Um, other than that, I mean, it's just a rough first week. They're... I mean, I wouldn't pay too much attention to it, to be honest. It's, you know, whatever on that. You know, shout out for DP for giving his own squad the hardest week one schedule, though. Hmm. (laughs) I didn't get to watch the um, Warhawks versus uh, Nexus match. Uh, I couldn't see the video. Um, I mean, I'm happy to see the MVP being real. So he obviously did something essential for that match. Um, But I did carefully watch the Pay Pigs uh nexus match um yeah i would agree with um uh on uh, flash yeah flash played pretty good i mean considering his squad you know pretty much lost by almost 40 something um yeah i mean you're getting a positive ratio in that type of situation more than you could ask for to be honest um and he played really solid i mean i wish he's I wish he played LMG or Marine or something for the longest. I mean, we all knew that he had it in him, especially also Fresh too. both of them. They're both extremely uh, skilled players. Like, if they play their classes to the extreme, in this case, Flash, we see now that he's really good at LMG. Same with Fresh. Um, there's a, definitely a chance, and that with Fosto in there. Um, and obviously, Rob played uh, pretty solid in terms of Medic. I, I really do expect things from this team now. 
Um, preseason analysis, I didn't expect, honestly, Foster to be in the lineup. Obviously, everybody else did, and then he joins, and, you know, now we see that there's their possibility here, you know, to even get into a playoff uh, position. Um, so with that being said, I kind of do hope that Nexus kind of gets more stronger um, during the season and uh, kind of potentially cause an outset for some of these uh, mid-tier or even number two or three squads. Yeah, I, what I would say is that this was a brand new team. I, I think we talked about how Bowen just threw this thing together at the last second. I was uh, going to be playing with Warhawks, ended up just joining them right at the very end, and then there were multiple guys that joined after me. So, uh, you know, the, the team that walked onto the field to play Pay Pigs, that was the first time that group had played together at all. Um, you know, I mean, we, we, we've SB'd a couple times, but typically we only had like five or six. Uh, Fausto and, uh, and Jake had not played with us at all uh, to that point. So I think there was a lot to learn there, um, and to do it quickly and kind of on the fly was tough to ask. But I, I really wasn't as disappointed with our first two games as, I, as, as you know, the score would probably lead you to think I would be. Um, I think that we probably 30% or higher of our deaths came from laws. It was just like incredible how many laws we took. That's something we, we're definitely going to have to work on. We, we could not trust our leader, mostly because a lot of people hadn't played with Fausto, I think. Um, but we just weren't trusting. We weren't listening quickly or reacting quickly. I think that's the kind of stuff that comes with squad battles. And unfortunately, we just haven't squad battled. And, uh, and I think it, the more we can squad battle, the, the, the more positive it'll be for our, our uh, postseason results. Um, I agree with what everybody else is saying, though. There's a, a lot of kindness in there. It was a rough week for Nexus, no, no question. Um, but at the same time, everybody came. We played every single person. Everybody had fun. There was nobody who was furiously mad at the end of the game. We're all looking just to play a game. And, uh, and yeah, there's some talented guys on our, on our team. So once we put it together a little bit, I'm hopeful that by, you know, week eight or whatever, um, that, that we definitely can, sit, can continue the fun. But I'm hopeful that we're able to bring it together a lot more and look like a more cohesive unit in terms of decisions being made. And uh, definitely, we've got leadership now that will, uh, uh, that will help us achieve that, I think. Um, let's talk about the game that, that sort of mattered uh, this week a lot, uh, which was Warhawks defeated Crapshooters 51-21. to We do have some mailbag questions about this later, uh, so I don't want to talk as too lengthy about this one. But uh, the MVP uh, was Staley in this game. I, I think there was um, a lot of question coming in here about what Warhawks team would show up. Um, and, uh, and Mecca, what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, first I wanted to say to crapshooters, don't get too down on that score. That was the exact score that um, over 9,000 beat Hungry Beavers week one last year, and we steadily improved throughout the year. So don't just because you lost by 30 doesn't mean that you can't compete. Um, I did think that crapshooters lineup was pretty interesting. I don't know who they would start over it, but I, it was nice to see that Sam showed. I think if you get T in there, maybe instead of Uni. I think this is a lot closer match. Um, I think uh, I was watching some T the other night, and and he's playing pretty well already. Um, you had a little bit of the playoff pandy in there going one and six. I saw on the video he died kind of stupid a few times. So you have to kind of manage that. You either get the six and one pandy or the one and six. Um, overall, I don't think they played awful. Uh, the beginning was pretty close, and then it just kind of got out of hand for there. Uh, but I think as the season goes on, and Pister keeps leading, I think that'll happen less. I think it's just a composure thing with Pister. I haven't, you know, I don't think, when was the last time Pister led a USL game, you know, 10, 12 seasons ago, something like that. So I think with the more matches, the more, um, you know, composure they get. And then as far as Warhawks, it was nice to see uh, Fax and Staley in there playing Marine. Um, they both held their own. They both did a pretty good job. Um, Fax was a nice leech, only having 106 assist points. Guy was hitting like one bullet and getting kills. Um, I think we kind of predicted this from the gift, only getting five kills. Um, as somebody who's led in the past as Marine, it's hard. It's hard to Marine and lead at the same time. And I think you're going to see that in the gift stats throughout the season. Um, and then, you know, obviously Kaga going 11 and two is huge, even though it was an earlier match. He was still able to show. Um, it's just going to be interesting throughout the season. What lineups Warhawks shows like, is Soul ever going to show? Uh, is Blitz ever going to show? If you look at who played for Warhawks, it's exactly probably who you thought were going to play. 
Um, and then can you rely on Blitz or Soul to ever show up? Uh, Hustler to ever leave CTF or Slob to actually on spec? I think is the big question for Warhawks going forward, but uh, definitely a good start for them. Yeah. Um, Crab Shooters, they have a very talented lineup that, you know, I was looking for a little bit more from them. I mean, I think if England shows up and plays, um, that makes a difference for those guys. But their first play is the one that I kind of want to talk about because it was like the weirdest one. They set up a little ambush, which was good up in the north building, but then they threw a nade when they were when Warhawks was about to come into the building, and then they just charged out of the building and just com- completely got demolished. Um, I don't know what that was about. I think if you're going to do that type of style, which is fine, just see it out. I mean, just completely hide your vision and, you know, get a pick, and then you're able to kind of kill another group um, from there. As far as, like, the real question mark for this team is, you know, it's going to be medics. You know, crab shooters, medics are not the best. Um, you have Chica and you have Sinage. Um, I think both of them didn't play very well in this game, to be honest. Obviously, Mecca just said Pandy, you know, he went one and six. Uh, that wasn't too good. Uni was the guy that um, I was looking for a lot from. He was very inconsistent the whole match, um, dying at what seemed to be first a whole lot of the fights. And you just can't do that versus, you know, a squad like Warhawks. Uh, Sabo, I thought, played fine. He looked good on LMG. We got the return of Hop or Keystone, which is pretty good. You like seeing him come back. And obviously, Sam did the best that he could out there, you know, with uh, everything that was going on. As far as Warhawks goes, I mean, they looked comfortable on this map. Uh, Staley was the real standout, in my opinion. He went in there as a Marine and was able to put up, I think, six or seven kills and didn't look out of place at all. Looked like he belonged in this lineup. And, you know, they just look good. I think the score um, doesn't really reflect fully how close that SB really was. Mainly that south battle where Staley uh, broke it open and got a double lock kill. Yep. That changed the whole dynamic of the whole SB. I mean, if that law didn't happen, uh, honestly, who knows what would have this whole thing played out. One thing is clear, though, if that law didn't happen and let's say Crab Shooters did win that battle, this would be way closer than this one. Um, with that being said, I mean, overall, I would say there was definitely some key players that stood out for uh, both teams. Crab Shooters, I would say, uh, Sab stood out, um, uh, and obviously Hop and uh, Nick. But uh, Sab specifically, he was obviously the, uh, he was the first person always pushing, right? And on top of that, you can kind of see that with him being there, you know, there was always a chance that they could win a battle, you know? Um, and uh, on the other side, one of the players that we all were kind of assuming was not going to show, which starts the show and may end up continuing the show, was Kaga, right? Granted that uh, he wasn't the player that broke that battle open uh, in terms of, you know, getting the decision. But nonetheless, I mean, he's the biggest killer on that team, no doubt about it, right? I mean, we see it all the time when we're practicing with them um, easily right now and potentially the number one LMG in the whole season, right? I mean, I can see that. I mean, he's always consistent. He always gets the kills when you need it. Um, with all that being said, the lineup that Warhawk showed is kind of what I would expect moving forward for the majority of the season that they're probably going to show uh, with. I mean, considering Soul's not going to potentially be there, I would imagine, or Blitz, it would be these guys. Right, and with this lineup that they had showed with uh, crab shooters, I, I feel like that's a good, really strong lineup. I mean, uh, the whole lineup's obviously strong, but um, but yeah, I, I actually was uh, impressed by both teams um, uh, because both teams had to kind of know what they were made of. Um, crab shooters had a really relatively close game, and uh, warhawks, you know, they turned out around when it looked like it, it could potentially be an L for them, you know. Um, but shout out to both teams on this one. I completely agree, Split. I think those first 10 minutes were uh, were really good, and it was a back and forth. And there was a moment there where crap shooters took the lead, uh, and they got into that defensive position. And I sat there and wondered for a second, is this really going to happen? Like, are they going to upset Warhawks? I mean, that changed pretty quick, but uh, I'll get to the, the why here in a minute. I think this team kind of 
follows Sabotage, Pandy, uh, Hop, and Lemon Pepper were the keys to the game for crap shooters for sure. Uh, Ninja of Lemon Pepper. Um, he was a little rusty, um, but at the same time, if you saw, there was a moment where he's shooting at Fairfax right before that law goes off uh, and hits the tree. And I'm telling you what, man, he looks so good against Fairfax, who's no slouch. He absolutely turned and just wrecked Fairfax on that. Um, I think Ninja is is going to be big for this team. Sabotage, I thought he played fine, um, but uh, but they're going to need they're going to need huge production from him. He's going to have to be their number one killer on this team. Um, Pandy, yeah, he can't go one and six. You just can't have a one and six Pandy, uh, you know, um, in in a game like this if you're going to want to win it. Uh, and Hop, I didn't see a whole lot, but he got second place for the team, so obviously he was doing pretty well. Um, what I, what I would say is exactly what Splitta said was the MVP of the game was Staley, and the reason for that was that law that happened at about the 10-minute mark, I guess, uh, when, when he hit the tree. It was, it was kind of a unique play where, um, where Sinage goes forward to try to heal um, uh, Ninja, who's fighting Fairfax and somebody else on the left, and Pandy tries to block for Ninja. Uh, and right as he's coming back from blocking, the law from Staley hits the side of that tree, and it kills... I think Pandy and Sinage immediately. And the moment that happened, I mean, you hear how loud I am because on the, on the, on the cast, because I mean, you just knew it. The moment that happened, that was like, it was like the air got let out of the balloon and Warhawks immediately took the kind of commanding lead that we knew they were capable of the whole time. Kaga's Kaga did exactly what Splita said. I think Kaga is the best LMG in the game right now. And he really showed uh, that, that uh, he showed out for this game. Uh, he was the best the best player on the field, I think. I also think that there's some kudos that need to go to Fairfax. He played a damn good Marine um, for the majority of the game. And also, exactly, Staley showed up, and I didn't see any fall off in terms of his Marine ability versus Medic. Um, I thought this was a great showing by Warhawks for a, an opening game, uh, and I thought it was a very fine showing for crapshooters, and they have nothing to be ashamed of. It was a, a very solid effort at taking down a a vastly superior roster, if I'm just being honest. Um, let's go forward and talk about some Week 2 games and give me your thoughts on what's going to happen here because, um, you know, we, we Week 1 kind of set the stage, but now as is, now is the season get going and now we're talking about playoffs. Um, 8.45 p.m., we've got Knock Your Punk Ass Down versus Warhawks. Uh, would everybody agree where that's going or anybody have any unique thoughts on that? No, I Especially on KR, I think it's in Warhawks as home, so they'll have Kali, so I don't think it's yeah. gonna be that different than what you think. Yeah, I think uh I think Knock Your Punk Ass Down drew drew also a very rough schedule in that they get to start with the number one and then the number two on two maps that they yeah, they just don't really have a chance on. Um I, I would you know, if Bax is gonna miss two matches, uh he couldn't have missed two better ones. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's move on to 930. Anything to win versus Nexus. Kind of similar, similar thing. Anybody have any have any thoughts on this other than what we kind of think is the obvious here? Uh, same here. Anything to win has home on KR. So, yeah. oh, never mind. I looked at it wrong. Nexus has home. Um, so it'll be a little bit interesting at the beginning, at least with Fosto trying to move around. But I think uh, the, the talent will win out as the game goes on. Uh, split anything you got or or Yosh? No. Okay. Uh, not really. I mean, I hope that that Fosto does the most brilliant camping technique to defeat Savo. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ten fifteen p.m. Uh, knock your punk ass down versus crapshooters. The double header for knock your punk ass down, and this is one that actually might be a little more competitive. Mecca, take it away. Yeah, I mean. Knock your punk ass down has Kali or should have Kali, I should say. Um, so it will at least be a little bit more interesting. I mean, I still think that um, they'll lose, but they have a lot better chance of keeping it closer when they're on Kali. Um, I think that again, backs not backs missing does make a difference here because um, you could slide him in there for like Ryan B or or Yami Kenchi or something like that, and it's a pretty significant upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that will make a difference here. I still think Crap Shooters wins. I think Crap Shooters are going to be very good on this map as well, um, especially if they show more people. Because I think Sabo and if if T shows, if if Sam shows, 
I think they're going to be a lot better on this map, and it's it, it could be a bloodbath if uh, if Knock Your Podcast done doesn't doesn't play right, because um, you know Septicemia always likes to go north, and it's a lot harder to go north on Kali, because um, Scrap Shooters is going to expect it and just surround them on KR, and KR is kind of a dead zone. So I think that you see this match again be kind of close at the beginning. Knock Your Ass Down is going to try to go up um, KR at the beginning, maybe up the tap. And then uh, once Crapshoot just finds them, I think it's going to be a bloodbath from there. Yeah, so I just hope that uh, NYPD actually plays somewhat standard. I mean, if you're going to use a Ripper, this is a good map to use it. Um, going north on KR is not it. There's a reason why nobody does it. Hopefully you fight in the south and you fight around your base. Like, that's kind of how it should be done. Um, if you want to set up a J ambush, that would be pretty cool with a Ripper. You know, you just got to do something that is out of the normal for what we expect you to do. Um, I think Septicemia is probably going to be the best player in this match, or at least for NYPD. If they have any shot of winning, he has to do very, very well. Um, Ripper is a class this season that can make it happen. <laughs> On this map particularly, it's probably one of the better maps for it. So I expect them to have good positioning and maybe set up a little ambush here or there, hide some vision and, you know, be able to just stop the pushes coming in um, from crap shooters. It's going to depend who shows, right? If Sam shows and T shows and, you know, they have their top roster in, uh, they should win this game by about 40. If, if I'm being realistic here. I feel like this match in, yeah, kind of a big surprise for everybody. Reason being, like, I feel like that first battle is kind of going to dictate how this whole match goes. If if uh, Steptosemia plays Ripper, which I'm expecting, and the Ripper right now is very OP, um, if they win that first battle and they're holding that south position, which I'm hoping he does, it's going to be really rough to push that. And not to mention the fact that uh, we don't we haven't seen Pister lead um, up on titan right so it's going to be a lot harder than people expect even though i would easily say that crap shooters obviously has a better lineup uh, but substitutemia i feel like if he plays his cards right wins the first battle it's possible that they keep this extremely close um so with that being said yeah i think this might be like within a 20 20 kill game potentially or less uh, I see this as a game for crapshooters to to demonstrate what kind of teams are going to be this season. I think that crapshooters can either come in and I think they're going to win. I don't think there's any debate in my mind that crapshooters are going to win. It's just by how much uh, and and what do they look like when they win. Um, I think if they if they they can make a statement here if they win this game by what I think they're going to do. Um, you know, if they clean house and you got guys like sabotage hop. Ninja and Pister, I think it's up to those guys specifically uh, to really come out and put in some some veteran play. Um, and uh, if they can do that, I think they're going to win this game by like 30 or 35. I've got the game going 65 to 30. Uh, but it's really going to depend on, you know, some of the players for uh, uh, for NYPD, Septicemia, Ghost Bomber, Enemy. I think that those guys are going to have to have big games. I also think MTR3 needs to be in that starting lineup. If he's not in the starting lineup, I think they're making a mistake. He's just he's a good player. Um, and uh, and I think that those four guys in particular are going to need to be on if they're going to be able to resist. Uh, and, I, you know, I think a, a win for NYPD is to keep it to a victory but at 10 or 15 kills. Uh, if you can do that, that's that's fantastic. Um, but uh, it, what I think is probably going to happen is that crap shooters are actually going to they're going to realize that this is their better of the two games for the week. Uh, and they're going to lay it out on NYPD, and 65-30 is my prediction for it. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the next game for Crap Shooters, uh, which is the 11 o'clock game, Pay Pigs versus Crap Shooters. Yeah, and I think it's important, too, um, to kind of lean on this game, that this is the second game for Pay Pigs of the night. So they'll be warmed up. If they win big versus NYPD, they have a little momentum going into this game. I still think Pay Pigs wins, hopefully split shows. Maybe not. Um, I think Paypigs looks a lot better when with split in. Um, but I, I, on KR, Crapshooters does have home, so they can do some campy stuff under Mesa, J Channel. Um, I've seen them, you know, kind of camp at their base under 
on her spaceship. So if they do all of that, um, Pay Pigs will struggle a little bit. I think eventually Pay Pigs does open it up just because I think they're more t- a more talented team. I Excuse think me. oh you done. No, sorry, I was coughing. Oh. I think they're I think Pay Pigs is a more talented team, but I think it does matter who shows for Pay Pigs. I think that's the most important part. And then if Sam and T show for crap shooters, I think it's gonna be a lot closer game than people think. So this is a game that I I want to see crap shooters win. Um they have the side advantage being on Kali here. So that's the biggest thing. I think that Pister has played enough on KR to kind of know how the map flows, and he should be able to get them in positions to be able to stalemate, you know, some of the firepower from Pay Pigs. Um, it's all going to depend on who shows for both rosters, and I think if you're Pay Pigs, you know, you got to have Splitter show up. Um, Dave needs to be here for this match, but then if you have all these guys coming in, who's going to bench? You know, you can't play 10 people, and Pay Pigs realistically has 10 starters right now, at least from a Marine point. You know, maybe Splitter could talk a little bit more about that when it's his turn, but, you know, you're going to have to bench somebody who's who's going to who's gonna not play this match, you know, because you're going to have Man U showing up, you know, as, you know, and Havoc is your second med, and then after that, you just have a bunch of Marines that, you know, somebody's going to get left out, and who's it going to be? Uh, I think, I think it's kind of, uh, kind of similar to what I was saying about the NYPD versus, um, Pistons squad. Uh, I, I think it's kind of like the opposite, like the same, same kind of scenario where like, uh, if, uh, crab shooters wins the first battle, uh, this could be very close. Um, they have the positioning, they could just hold out. We've seen how that goes. Very hard to break it. Uh, coming from Kali, it's just. Not easy. It's not easy to push it. It's not easy to win it. Also, just horrible to be in those angles and positioning to begin with, right? But with all that being said, uh, lineup-wise, I think we're gonna probably play something similar to what we played last week. I mean, I know I'm not gonna be there. Uh, Sunday's eat, so I shall be here at my house with family. And I'm not sure if Dave's gonna be there either. But truth be told, with our lineup, honestly, I don't think that we're. I don't think that we'll lose, but. Of course, I do expect, uh, obviously, any chance that Pister could potentially win, right? If they if they win, I mean, obviously, they deserve it, right? But with that being said, the key players that I expect to perform from both squads is for craft shooters, I would say uh, Sabotage, number one. I mean, if they're going to win, it's because of Sabotage, in my opinion, or potentially Ninj. Um, Ninj is lost, you know, he's a killer, he's smooth, he knows how to dodge. I mean, we saw him uh, survive, barely survive at that, that middle area choke, South Rocks, which was pretty, pretty clutch. I mean, he he's still kind of like coming back to the league and kind of getting back his skills, but he's playing phenomenal overall. Um, and then obviously Hop, right? Hop, uh, my former jock teammate, he was great before, I mean, he still is still great now. I mean, you see him even now, like I was even dueling with him like, like a couple of weeks ago. His name's still there. He's still really good, you know? And you see him, you see him how he played. Uh, obviously, his skills are there. You know, these players are obviously going to have to do as well, probably even better than what they did last uh, or this last weekend to uh, defeat Paypigs. As for Paypigs, the key players that I'm expecting to kind of make the difference um, and take us over the top, number one would be Mountain. I mean, he performed really well. Uh, last weekend, I mean, he had 20 kills. I mean, obviously, Nexus is not crap shooters, but, I mean, he did what he was supposed to do. Mountain is, uh, in my opinion, one of the best killers in uh, USL. I mean, he might be number one if you really look at the stats for his case. But with that being said, uh, yeah, I'd say Mountain and uh, Danny and uh, Typhoon all performed really strong. I'm expecting uh, this week uh, perf- performances from Mountain and uh, also Kevin didn't have a big performance last weekend but I'm expecting one for this weekend um, I'm not sure if Dave's going to show um, if he does yeah I mean I don't know how we want to arrange that but with that being said uh, I'm kind of expecting that we play the same players that we played last weekend right now um, and uh, I'm also expecting us to win by probably within a 20 kill to 30 kill margin 
Uh, I'll echo what Yosh said, which is that this this game is just going to come down to rosters. It comes down to who who shows up. Um, you know, I think like the guys that I can pretty much guarantee will be there. Crap shooters have a consistent core right now. At least you can say that for them. With pay picks, I'll be honest, man. If if Dave and Splita, if you aren't there, this is the game where you guys want to need to be there. Like this is going to be this is going to be a a big game for both teams. Uh, and this could be a huge upset if crap shooters can pull this thing off. Um, I will say that I think the Marines are pretty fairly balanced in my mind to a, to a certain degree. I think I agree with what you're saying. The mountain, especially with a 24, uh, 20 and four ratio last, last, uh, in game one. I mean, he's, ju- he's the most dominant player on the field in terms of a killer, but I mean, in that second, third, fourth Marine position, I think you match up really well, uh, particularly if Pandy can not go one and six. Uh, I mean, I think everybody knows what he's capable of. It's kind of like it's a wild thing where he just continues. He, is, he has bad games, but everybody knows who Pandy is. So, um, you know, I mean, it just depends on who shows up and how they play, I guess. Um, I think Danny 17 and six is huge. The question is, do you get that kind of Danny again in week two? Um, I, I was interested that victim played a lot more than than, you know, I expected him to. And I mean, it looked really good, really good, I thought. Uh, Leak exactly the same thing. Uh, Leak was dominating. Um, he really, he really did a good job. So, I, I if you saw victim and Leak again, I don't think that's anything. You're not losing a lot of talent there from the way they performed uh, in that game. Um, but I think this game is mostly going to come down to your medics. I think it's going to come down to the difference in the medic core on both these teams. Is it's Manu and Havoc ver- versus Chica and Sinage most likely? And uh, you know, I'm. I'm just saying, like, Manu and Havoc definitely have that for me. Uh, It's a pretty substantial upgrade, in my opinion, actually. So, um, you know, if if they come out and play and that's the the roster you got, it really just depends on um, what Marines show up and how they play. Uh, But I think the medics are definitely tilting in Paypig's way. I do see Paypig's winning it because of that. I think it's going to be about 54 to 34. Yeah. but uh, let's uh, – anybody got us anything else, any other predictions for week two, anything crazy anybody wants to throw out there? No. Okay. Um, let's go to the mailbag then. Uh, question number one. I'm a returning player to the game who's watched some of the games this weekend. Uh, my takeaway seems to be that there's a noticeable disparity between team quality. What – what do you all think that the lower tier squads can do to help bridge that gap? Or is the league just destined to have teams that can't compete at all with the top tier squads? I want to be um, diplomatic and say that's not ever going to happen, but there's always going to be a low tier squad for those lower players. Um, Cause they got to play somewhere, right? Like if they join one of the top four squads, say this, this uh, season, they're probably not ever going to play. Yeah. They'll learn through SBs and, you know, the top squads always pick up a few players that don't have a lot of experience or haven't played a lot. But at some point, there's just too many new players or too many lower skilled players that are going to need a team. You know, they can't all fit onto the top roster. So I think that's always going to happen. Um, and, you know, I don't think you can ever expect it to not happen there. If you look at any sports league in the world, there's always games like that. There's always the teams that are the best playing the teams that aren't the best. And I don't think there's, I don't think that's avoidable. Um, you can hope for parity depending on the season with enough people moving over. But as far as, you know, a season without any blowouts, I don't think it's ever going to happen. Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing that, you know, if you're, if you're a returning player, the biggest thing that helped me personally was just mousing. I switched over from keyboarding to mousing and it's just a whole lot easier to be honest. As long as you have a decent sized rezo. Um, that's the first thing that I would say. Um, and then as far as like parity and stuff like that, I mean, at a certain point, you're going to have players that just cap out in their skill level for whatever reason. You know, they may have something, you know, if I, if I wanted to be like provide harsh criticism, then I could pretty much go down everybody's roster on the bottom two squads and tell you what you're lacking, right? There's something that you're not doing or there's something that you don't have that is stopping you from being a productive player on a top tier team, right? Um, 
and I'm probably the biggest example of this is I'm not a very good player by any stretch of the imagination, right? There's a lot of people out there that have better aim than I do, um, that are better mechanically or whatever. But the big thing that I have over a lot of people is one, I just don't make a whole lot of um, mistakes that is going to cost my team a fight. You know, mm -hmm. um, the biggest example I have of this is Uni, right? Good player, but he's a guy that you can't really trust what he's going to do from time to time. He can't, he doesn't, maybe he doesn't see the field or, you know, gets tunnel vision or something like that. But that's the biggest thing that separates lower tiers, lower tier players with average aim to top tier players, right? that can produce on a, mm -hmm. on another team. Whereas, you know, another example of this would be backs. Good A, zero battle awareness, right? I love the guy. I think he's all right, but his battle awareness is not there. And in a better squad, that's going to kill you, right? And so how do you work on that? I don't know, right? Um, also comfortability. You know, being a comfortable with who you're playing around is huge. Um, at this point, you know, we've all, I mean, I played with most of the guys on my squad for years, right? How are you really going to break into that um, and really upset that? I mean, just keep working hard and focus fire and doing all the little things that are going to make you good. You know, call out focus fire. You know, practice your law snipes, stuff like that, and just actually try, and you should be fine. Before Split goes in, um, I would say, too, CTF Discord has a CTFU channel where people post videos of themselves playing, and other more experienced and possibly better players kind of weigh in after they look at it. I think that would be super helpful for SK when I'm thinking about it. I think, like... If somebody recorded them or, you know, you just pull up the match recording, like, what could I have done differently here? And you have, you know, a couple of people in there just willing to Let's take a look at the video and kind of, record, you know, because we, we do that within our squads a lot. I know I do it. I know it's like Sav does it. Yosh does it sometimes too. TG and Ernie do it. Um, so I think to have somebody else look at your play, if you don't, you know, if you think you made a lot of mistakes and kind of get some advice, I'm, I think that could help a lot. So I think it'd be an interesting channel to add on this Discord. Uh, for sure. Uh, I agree with everybody um, with what they said so far. Things to add on, I would say, uh, first and foremost, is to mimic whatever you're trying to kind of like simulate. Not like anything else, you want to kind of like follow or play like uh, the player that you like that's better players, right? So with that being said, if you're a mouser or if you want to be a mouser, uh, maybe, you know, getting somebody's settings, Start with the basics first, which is your individual skills, right? So once you get past that, then move on to the next step, which is SBs. Get on a squad, ideally a mid-tier or top-tier squad, um, and uh, SB as often as possible. The more SBs that you do, the more experience you'll gain and the better player you'll become as well. Uh, but yeah, just like anything else, I really think it's boils down to practice, uh, individual skills first, and then you move on to SBs. Uh, I don't think I could say anything more that you guys um, haven't said. I think it's just practice, and I completely agree with what Mecca was saying, is that if you can, watch yourself or talk to players that are on your squad and say afterwards in PMs and just be like, hey, man, I, I didn't do a couple very well on these couple of plays. Can you tell me what was wrong? If they remember, hopefully they do. Or you can watch the video back and say, you know, what was that? What, what should I have done here? I did that all last season. Just asking individual questions. What should I have done uh, differently? I think that that will make you a better player. Uh, and I agree completely with what Yosh said, which is that everybody on the bottom, I would say even three squads, um, to a certain degree, there are um, there are there are pieces that are missing there in the game. Uh, some of them, some people are more obvious than others. Um, but uh, but you know, it, when you're missing. Major pieces like particularly dying first in battles or um, not being able to dodge explosives; those kinds of things are weaknesses for a top tier team to have, and you you just can't 
you just can't field that player. And if you can't be fielded, then you can't, then it's not worth you being on the roster. So um, I would say that individuals have to work on their game and improve. And uh, I, I think it'd be great, actually. I mean, in the days of SL, we had four, five, six squads that were literally competing for first place all season long. I would like to see it where there's at least four that are legitimately competing. But that kind of thing takes, uh, takes, it takes team building and it takes a lot of practice. So um, love to see us get there. Uh, Mecca, do you have a second question here for the mailbag? Oh, yeah. Somebody asked me about pay pigs um, and who is going to eventually bench on pay pigs. Because, you know, you already had Leak coming in at halftime last week and, and Manu and Spec, and that was without Dave or Splitta there. So I wanted to kind of throw it out there. there. Obviously, Split will have more insight, but he doesn't need to reveal his secrets if he doesn't want to. But maybe Rom and um, Yosh can talk about this as well. Who do you think eventually is benching for pay pigs and maybe who's their ideal starters? You want to go first, Rom? Uh, well, I'll say the 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 guys that I eventually see benched are Torch and Typhoon. Uh, Torch, I, I I just don't think that. Oof. Yeah, yeah. I I don't I don't think Torch is uh is just gonna make it most of the time. I think when you look at a lot of those other guys, I think that they're just um probably better team players to put on there. I think Typhoon is is absolutely playing awesome, and I think it's a mistake to do it. But I I get the feeling they're going to not go with, with Typhoon, um, especially if Dave and Split are there. What are you going to do? You're, like we're saying, you're going to have to pick. Uh, and I think there are guys with better, uh, better chemistry, I guess, although I think Typhoon is, Typhoon is a gamer, um, which is the kind of guy that like, maybe doesn't play great in practice, but on Sundays when the lights are on, Typhoon is on. He's play, he, all last season, he played well. I can't think of a single game he did not play well on a team that, struggled and uh and and so you know i mean i'd like to see him get his day in the sun but um you know i just right now i i see those two guys as first two to go uh and i you know i i think that guys like big bird probably would i I think i'd probably sit big bird too but i i don't know the internal dynamics of the team Uh, i i definitely take typhoon over big bird though right now but i just don't know that that's how that plays out it's big bird squad so yeah so i think if they bench Typhoon, that's a huge mistake. Um, the guy wants to win, mm-hmm. right? The only bad thing about Typhoon is his activity isn't the best, but and when it comes down to it, he's played actually pretty decent. Um, that's you know what it what it is. I mean, obviously you can't be you can't bench the Mountain. I heard Dave wanted the Med this season. Is he going to show up? You know, is he going to Med? Is he going to take you know Man U spot? Is he going to take Havoc spot? Is he going to play AT? You know, um, are you going to bench Danny? Are you going to bench Leak? Kevin? Splitter? Bird? Somebody's got a bench here. And if it's leadership-wise, I mean, uh, it depends who's leading for the team. I think, I don't know who led last week. I assume it was Bird. Um, and he looked okay leading out there, playing LMG. Um but he's also playing LMG. I know Splitter likes to play LMG as well. So you're going to have a little bit of conflict of interest on that. Or is Split going to play Marine? Is Bird going to play Marine? You know, who's going to lead? You know, is is Dave going to come back and lead? You know, you have all kinds of these little roster spots that I don't think they have it figured out yet. And I'm just going to go ahead and say this now. I think one person from PayPigs is going to end up leaving and joining another team. I could definitely Ooh. see. Yeah, I hope not. I mean, honestly, I think uh, our team is uh, a group of good guys. I feel like all of us. Would be it's very, to very diplomatic of you, Splitter. You know, um, no, really who's going to sit? Honestly. You know, when you guys play anything to win, who's going to sit? I mean, like I said, it's, 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 it's going to be who shows right. Um, who's most active usually that week is who who who's probably going to be playing. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like if we notice one person put up months that week, maybe he might not be the best person to start that week. Um, uh, with that being said, we have a lot of people that we put in rotations. Even right now, like let's say I'm not there this weekend, which I'm expected not to be, right? We have a lot of people that can replace me. Uh, similarly, same with Dave. This is the reason why we have this roster, because I'm sure of it. Like we saw last season, like what's already happening this season, not everybody's going to start every game. 
right? Yeah. Um, and with that, being I agree. Said, it's I mean, good to have some people, you know, as backups or, you know, not everybody's going to show every game. So there's going to be a lot of starting spots, but like, what happens in playoffs when you show 11 people? Uh, honestly, I mean, like, I, I haven't seen that ever where we had like everybody show for playoffs. I mean, I was begging Soul, begging Soul to show up. And, Come on, it's uh, Soul. You knew he wasn't you know? going to show up. <laughs> and then, and you know what happened? But the moment I told Soul, Fuck off! Even if you're not, even if you show, I'm not gonna play you. It fucking shows. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, with that being said, honestly, I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, I don't know who's gonna show. Um, obviously, we're gonna play who's been playing the best, right? I mean, that's just common sense, right? Who has the best chemistry? Who's been playing the best, as well as, uh, you know, um, who we think uh, will get us to one to win, right? Sometimes it's not. The guy that's going to get us the most kills. Uh, that's just the guy that's going to be most consistent with us. The guy that's been playing with us. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. With that being said, I, I think I think uh, with our group of guys, we don't have a lot of guys that are like hot headed and you know that it's going to be like, oh fuck you, I'm leaving because I'm not being played. I, I just don't see that. Like most of our players are not like that. You know what I mean? So I mean, obviously, if one person does leave, I would suck because I don't think that anybody should leave. You know what I mean? Um, and if any player wants to play, I'm sure that me, Dave, or whoever else for that matter would be willing to set to let them play. Would I'm you be so... willing to sit against anything, anything to win if somebody else wanted to play? Or Warhawks? depending if it was like you know, like during the season. Honestly, I really don't care much about most of the matches. I mean, I will play. I will be there for sure for Warhawks and anything to win matches. Um, but uh, yeah, we're playing each other twice, so. I don't see so long as we get in the playoffs, right? I'm just gonna put this out there. I've heard rumblings from the Pay Pigs camp already. So whoever whoever's question that was, you're on it right now. <laughs> I appreciate um, your diplomatic answers. I, I, I do. You you handled that. You handled the I understand why well. you're answering the way you do. I just don't think it's realistic. Yeah, it's not we'll realistic. see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah, you did a good job of fielding it though. Uh, let's go to the next one, which is uh, Warhawks came into this weekend's match with crap shooters with a lot of haters talking about how they're inconsistent squad battles and won't be able to show an active roster. Eric went so far as to predict that crap shooters would actually win the match. With Warhawks winning both games by a heavy margin, does the panel now think that they are competitors for number one squad this season? And what did the panel think about Eric's video prediction for Sunday? I'm going to start. Yeah, uh, okay, so when I saw Eric's video, I was laughing and I was thinking about taking a shot of tequila because I think that's what he was doing right before he made the video. Um, but with that being said, uh, yeah, it didn't make any sense. We, you know, we all knew that Warhawks was going to be more than likely. The probability was way higher than 50%. It wasn't even close, right? It was probably like a 70% chance that Warhawks was at least 70 minimum. Obviously, when Eric says otherwise to that, obviously, there's going to be a lot of people that say. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it is what it is. I actually did like uh, Eric putting his two cents in. It's good for the community. It's good to have uh, everybody put kind of weighing in their opinions as well. Yeah, I, I, I'll just go ahead and answer. I think Eric pot stirring is, is kind of fun, but I agree completely. I think nine out of ten times Warhawks wins that game. Um, I think it is. I think it's generally kind of wild. I do think they're going to compete for number one. I think anything to win is my clear favorite right now. I don't even really think it's really. Um, I think the anything to win kind of beats Warhawks right now pretty bad. But by in eight or nine weeks, it might be a completely different uh, situation. I don't know. I, I think the guys on Warhawks typically uh, get better as the season goes on, as they get more in shape. I do think also that the. People have under, I, I was playing with them all off season. I know how active they were and soul and Kaga in particular, were both very active um, and more active than I've seen them. Soul's and not going to show. Maybe he won't, Don't. but he, even, even then he announced it way early. I saw the message when he announced it at the very beginning of the day that he just couldn't make it. Um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. I, I, I think Warhawks was going to win this game. Um, I, you know, maybe it'll be better for, uh, for crap shooters later down the season, but I, I thought that the prediction that, that crap shooters were going to win this was, a was a wild one to say the least. <laughs> so yeah, that was a little bit wild. Um, 
Obviously, Warhawks were the clear favorite in this game. I think a lot of it comes down to map specifics, though. If they played them on a different map, it may have been, you know, a different outcome, right? That's what it comes down to a lot with, you know, squads and stuff like that. Um, you know, if they played them on, you know, a map that they'd been practicing on the entire time, um, which is CV, like, that match could have been completely different, right? I think EC just gave him a very comfortable spot to kind of play. And, you know, we saw the results of that there. Mecca, anything on you? Or... No, I don't really have that much to add. I mean, I okay. think, I although I would say the same thing about CV. I mean, I think Warhawks is just so experienced on um, EC that I think it was... I mean, I did predict it to be closer, and I did think it could have been closer, judging by how it started. Um, so I was kind of disappointed to see Crabtree just kind of get routed in the second half of the game. Yeah. Um, oh, just one more thing to add sure. in. Um, Eric's prediction of the kills are pretty horrible. Uh, so <laughs> he said that we're going to be number two. I was like, no, that's... we're not going to go to the playoffs now. Thanks, guys. Um, who uh, Who had the most disappointing performance in week one? And who had the most surprising performance in week one? Let's just get some individual names out there. I don't know if, if you can count it as um, disappointing because we've kind of it's kind of part of the course half the time, but Pandy going one and six yep. against Warhawks really did kill them. I mean, because if Pandy goes even, you know, four and four, that's a completely different game. Yeah. Um, I'll let everybody else weigh in on that before we go to disappointing. No, I, I'll agree with Pandy. He was on my short list. Uh, I, in terms of most disappointing performances for week one, I had Sinage. I thought that he, uh, he, there were some serious plays where he needed to be in better positions um, and, and yeah, a couple of deaths that he had that were just devastating for his team. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's just, we didn't know how Sinage would play. I didn't think he played awful. Um, at the same time, I think he could have been better. It was probably the uh, second med, in my opinion, for that game. Pandy, well, for the reasons we mentioned. I also think Ghost Bomber had a pretty bad week. Um, he's going to need to play a lot better than that for his team if they want to do, if they want to have a successful season at all by their metrics. And uh, and and Ghost Bomber's a, a pretty pivotal piece of that team uh, in the lineup that they have. So uh, Ghost Bomber had a really a couple of really strange dashes in the game against us. Yeah, it just I you know if if you're gonna play like that, I I would say play a regular class. Um, I felt like AT was kind of useless, kind of the way he was playing it. But um, that that's me for the most surprising performance. Uh, we already mentioned Fax and Staley. Uh, I mean, the competition wasn't that difficult, but at the same time, both of them were stepping into the Marine role and played it very well. And were in the middle of the lineup. There, uh, you know, they they did very well. Uh, I think Leak surprised me with his ten and one. Um, Lee, Lee came on and it was like he never left there for that game. He looked so dominating. Uh, and then uh, from Nexus, I thought uh, Sinner did really well. Um, he played better than me, um, and uh, which not not hard, but at the same time, uh, he hasn't been playing that long at all, uh, and he did really well. Um, Outmeted me in the Warhawks game quite a bit, so uh, that was a tough game to stay alive in. But um, yeah, those are mine. Okay, so my most disappointing player this week was Fresh. Um, there was a lot of times in spec where I was just like, what are you doing? Like, I understand you're playing, you know, a combat class, you're mostly playing Marine or Medic, but, like, you kind of know what to do as a Med. You know, you see Marines make mistakes and you were making all of them, right? You were the player that was the most disappointing on Nexus and for them to do well, like Bosto has to step up. He can't be four and eight. Um, you know, I think having consistent leadership is a big thing. I think Bowen should be leading the entire time and just let Bosto kill. Um, I think, you know, fresh and flash, those guys are going to have to, you know, Fre flash did fine. Fresh has got to step it up. Um, SK, you know, going three and seven, you know, he's a better player than that. Um, you know, and I think a player that's not being utilized enough is MP. Like, I think he needs to be playing um, games, but the game that he did get to play in, he played Marine for some reason. Right? Like, I don't understand. 
you buffed Ripper and it's really good right now. Why are you not playing Ripper? Like somebody on that team needs to play Ripper and you should be the one to do it. Like I from my understanding, I think he's a mouser. So like it's you know, just point on people. You know? Like that that was, you know, one of the other disappointing people from um that I kind of expected a little more from. Any surprising performances? Yeah. Um what was the guy's name? Uh the guy from uh Yami Good Kenny. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah the CTF -er. He came in and did fine. I thought he looked okay. Yeah. His name was on point. Right? Um, as long as he keeps doing what he's doing and just you know, learn. I could see him producing on a on a pretty good team next season. Like I'm pretty interested in that guy and I think he can potentially step up to some high tier, mid tier squads. Mm -hmm. Uh Splitter or Mecca, anybody else? Uh sorry. Uh yeah. So for me it would be over to Mecca, I would say Pandy. Uh, as a winning player. And the reason why is obviously the scoreboard, right? But the thing about Pandy that kind of, I just feel like is just not enough is just him showing up on a Sunday. You know, uh, you know, like all the other players are practicing throughout the week. Obviously, we know Pandy's a great player. But like, just like anything else, if you only show up once for like 30 minutes, you're not going to play as good as everybody else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so I think Pandy's case is pretty consistent. He's just not showing up consistently enough to play to Pandy's level. You know? If he if he practices, I'm sure of it, maybe even once or twice a week, his performances would be like 100% different. Yeah. But with that being said, I would say Pandy was obviously the most disappointing player that I've seen throughout the, this last weekend. I mean, I was also kind of hoping um, that Boza had a big performance. I did notice that he didn't have like Oh, math, really. Like, he didn't play as much minutes as I was hoping either. But um, that was another one. I was kind of hoping that he would kind of be like a standout killer for Nexus. Um, I'm kind of hoping that I will tell there. Um, and surprising, two surprising players, obviously, I already mentioned Flash. Um, and surprising player that I would say would be Staley. Well, okay. um, we spoke about him earlier, Staley. but okay. by far, yeah, he was the Yeah. Uh, what, what do you, I mean, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't mean to make you comment on it, Splitter, but I think it'd be interesting if, if Torch was kind of the odd man out, uh, it'd be really interesting for him to end up at crapshooters, uh, because if he were to play over Pandy, like, th that, that's a position he could slot right in, and this team would look better. On, on last Sunday, they would have looked better, I think. Um, just a, just a thought. Torch there. looks good on Paypix. <laughs> um, uh, anybody else, Mecca, or are you good? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, if you were to replace any two players from NYPD with Sov and Iron, how many wins would you give them for the rest of the season? Um, I don't know if you can answer that with any two players. It really would depend on which two players you're, you're replacing them with. Well, let's just say you have the you know, whoever in your mind are the top six, and then you add Sov and Iron to it. Wait, I thought the question was if you remove Sov and Iron from anything to win. No, if you if you put them on NYPD, yeah, if you remove them from anything to win. Where the oh, question is, how does put, it, NYPD put, perform if you put Sov and Iron on that roster with the top six? Um, I mean, I think they probably push crap shooters for playoffs i think they probably get four or five wins um i, I obviously saw and iron are two of the better players in the league but nypd is very heavy to carry um into you know significant win totals so um so i think <laughs> you would have a lot of interesting personality clashes that go down there um I think it would be very, very funny to kind of hear the cobs because I think certain people would leave at, at a point because Sav would be taking over and just telling people to be quiet. Don't talk. <laughs> right? You have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. So just, you know, just chill, you know? And I think on NYPD, there's certain players on that team that would not like that. And it would actually weaken them pretty hard. But I think they could potentially push like 
three wins, maybe. Yeah, I would agree. It's like three, three wins, maybe four, but probably three wins. Uh, I, I don't know. Did you guys see that moment where Sav and Iron were in the hangar together fighting four dudes? Uh, <laughs> dude, that was the most incredible thing. Like they moved perfectly in rhythm together. Uh, you know, Iron was hitting those heels right when he needed to and fighting otherwise, and Sav just destroyed everybody that was chasing him. It was so ugly. It, I'm so glad I was recording that. Um, I'd like to say one thing, too. Uh, Sav, as a leader, obviously we all know he's not far. Iron, probably the best player, like we about the... Um, we have number one and number two players, right? You put him on any squad. Let's say they put him on NYPD. I, I, I think that would put him in playoffs easily. I, I, I would put him over crapshoots just because of Sav and Iron. I know how that sounds, but I really do think that would play out that way. It's, it's kind of an interesting thought experiment, which is why I like the question a lot. It was kind of fun. Um, yeah, I wonder, I wonder how much it would make a difference. Could they be a playoff squad? Sure. I guess it would just depend on the play of those other six players and whether or not they could do it. Um, I, yeah, backs would be, that would be wild. Um, but you know, guys like ghost bomber, hopefully he get put in a better position, um, to make, you know, Sav would micromanage the shit out of that. And you probably end up with a, with a deep, very decent squad out of it. Um, so that, that'd be my thought on it. Um, let's see here. I've got a few announcements, but any, anybody have anything else before I get to that? I did have two, uh, mailbag questions, two more, I should say came in late through the wire. Sorry. Um, first question, Big Bird was calling out Septic for playing bad last season and essentially quit. Yeah, he goes five and seven against Nexus. Does Big Bird really deserve the coin of big, uh, a good player? If he's leading, I assume he led that game. I guess the answer is he was not. Oh, okay. Well, that's rough. Um, that's rougher. I definitely think that earlier. Everybody said BB was leading and SV led. Okay. If Big Bird is not leading and he goes five and seven as LMG, at least that makes you, I mean, like, um, I mean, you got to bench him, right? That's your, that's your answer. I completely agree. I I mean, I think you've got better players on that roster that have got to play if that's the case. Um, you know, maybe Big Bird comes back in form later, but you got to make him fight for his position a little bit because you do, you have three or four guys in the wings that are definitely going to put five and seven up. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Anything yeah, not a or? great, not a great look for the BB supporting, uh, BB uh, starting. Support. I th- yeah. I think B- big bird, um, big birds like anybody else. Like he just came back. He didn't play that many games. They all kind of faded. When I came back. I was fucking, with like a glass eye or something it's really hard you know when you come back to this game Try playing with I glass think... eye. <laughs> I took that for you Becca anyway um yeah so I think for Big Bird's case time will tell I mean I don't I like I even told Big Bird I don't expect him to play wild in the first matches you yeah know, uh, it's gonna take a little bit but probably week three or four maybe five etc we're gonna see a difference when they just go to hell. Yeah, Big Bird bench confirmed thanks split um, I mean, if Leak's playing like that, yeah, he's definitely got to play. Yeah, he's he's got to. Oh yeah, Leak. I forgot to mention. Uh, yeah, Leak's play was exceptional. I was looking at the minutes. Yeah, he didn't even play the full match, and he played it. Yeah. Well, you guys, you guys benched him. You didn't start him. Yeah, and Typhoon wow. too. Typhoon went twelve and two on the game. I mean, like, it, it, like, yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get numbers out of Typhoon that you're not getting out of Big Bird right now. So, what's your uh, what's your next one there? Becca. Um, with Ernie and TG being great players, how come they can never perform against good squads? Well, we see this again when they play against Pay Pigs and anything to win this season. Ooh. I don't support this question, but it was asked, so I feel journalist and journalistic integrity. I, I think there's no doubt that Ernie and TG are pretty fantastic players. I mean, he could rate himself a 65 all he wants. Gift is is the best supporting Marine in the game. Uh, he's a he's a good he's a great assisting marine. That's what he is, uh, and Ernie is phenomenal. Uh, you know, so um, I mean, Gift won a ring last season. What do you want? What do you want from the guy? Jesus Christ! Oh, I mean, the question specifically asking if they can put up stats against the uh, better squads. 
I'm gonna say no. Um, Damn. I mean, it is what it is. Like, I think versus crap shooters and maybe maybe pay pigs too. But I think that pay pigs game is a lot closer than people are thinking. Um, I think they're I think their supporting cast is very weak this season. That's you know what I think. Especially if you know Blitz and Soul aren't there, right? Like if yep. you have um Fax and Staley Marine, it's a lot different than having Kaga and, and Soul there, Marine. Hundred percent. Um <laughs> Splitter has somehow muted himself to the point that I cannot unmute him. I'm not I've tried to unmute, but it's on his end, I think. Um He's had enough. Yeah. He just had to retire from the show. I don't know. I'm not sure what to say about that one. Um, well, I can quote him if you want. With that being said, I think I agree with Yosh. <laughs> it's like he never left. Split up. Um, <laughs> anyway, well, that'll, unless you got anything else, Mecca, that'll wrap it up for me. No, that was it. Okay. Well, I got a few announcements. First of all, No Man's Land, a uh, revived skirmish zone that is chock full of nostalgia. You see what I did there? Uh, it is up and begging for players. Fairfax wants you to play NML with him. So log in and do it. We are trying to encourage zone population uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you could just log in even, that would be very helpful. Um, I want to talk about something that I didn't know about, actually, which is IO's Landing. Uh, Military Belize brought this. He mentioned this zone to me, and I didn't even know what it was at the time. It's a skirmish-based zone that pits human players against bots. Um, you make sure to navigate to the, what's called the cooperative zones. It's got like easy, hard, other levels uh, when you join because otherwise the bots won't generate. But it's a pretty good way to practice dodging and working together as a team. It's kind of fun. Uh, and if the zones aren't populated, that's a good alternative if you just want to play infantry still. So I just wanted to recommend that to people. Uh, I know CTF is going on, CTF Tuesday. CTF is hopping right now. Um, and if you guys can, I want to I want to encourage us to support that community where we can. Uh, get involved, get on a team, whatever you can do, uh, you know, help those guys out. I, I think it's cool when there's a lot of cross play between CTF and skirmish. You never know who's going to latch on to one or the other. And some of the best skirmish teams ever have been CTF teams that migrated over. Um, also, uh, I want to remind people about the SB embargo. Uh, it's not officially in place. I, don't, I haven't seen anybody talk about it, but I do want to encourage people to adhere to it, which is 1030 p.m. Uh, try not to SB before 1030 to encourage uh, population growth. But at 1030, the, the gates are open. And uh, and I don't think anybody's going to blame you if you peel off. So uh, any final comments or thoughts from any of the panelists? Well, I just want to say that uh, Ghost Farmer scored 50 points in fantasy going 2-11 and 11 this week. How? That's, that's, uh, uh, the that's assist point margin. If you get over 65% assist points of your total points, you get a huge spike. Luckily, nobody had them, but that could have been hilarious if somebody picked them. What a I very mean, interesting... Time to get Ghost Bobber. <laughs> choice there. Um, that'll do it for the Week 2 Preview Show. You can play Infantry for free. Download the game right now on Steam. Just type in Free Infantry in the search bar or visit FreeInfantry.com. If you're interested in league play, maybe you're not currently involved, you got to the end of this podcast somehow, uh, please visit USLZone.com. Uh, also, sign up on site where you can view roster schedules, forums, and our historic Hall of Fame uh, section of that of that website. Also, be sure to check out all available videos on the Infantry Online YouTube page, built and maintained by military police. Feel free to le- relive the nostalgia anytime you want by going back to watch uh, gameplay from past seasons. I'd like to thank my co-host for this show. That'd be Mecca, Yosh, and the Banished Splitta. Uh, this has been Rami Lox, and you've been listening to USL Season 23 Week 2 Preview Show. See you all in game.